Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? Black Magic here and thanks for checking out today's video where I'll be sharing my overclocking settings for the AMD FX 6300 CPU. Now I've had quite a few of you guys requesting this video in the past week or so and I finally got a chance to round to making it, but before I get into my BIO settings, I wanted to add a disclaimer. I am not in any way, shape, or form responsible for possible damages that may come from overclocking your CPU. I assume that if you're watching this video, you already have a basic understanding of computer hardware and that you've considered the risk that you're taking no matter how big or small it may be. While overclocking is safe for the most part and relatively easy if you take the time to learn it, always remember to monitor your voltages and temperatures when stress testing your CPU. I also assume that you're doing this kind of an overclock with an aftermarket heat sink, whether it's air or water, and not using the stock cooler that comes with the processor itself. So now that we've got all that out of the way, let's get into the BIOS settings. So right off the bat, you'll notice that the motherboard I use the ASUS M5A97 supports UEFI BIOS and UEFI stands for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. If your BIOS does not support UEFI and you're not sure how to achieve these overclock settings then feel free to shoot me your question in the comments section and I'll do what I can to help you out. So obviously we're gonna need to go into the advanced settings to overclock the processor so once you go into there go ahead and click on AI over tweaker so we can begin the overclock. So the first step is to go ahead and switch your AI overclock tuner to manual that way we can tweak the settings as we need. Then you're going to want to change your CPU ratio to 21.5. Go ahead and disable the AMD Turbo Core technology. We do not need that on. For the CPU bus frequency, I normally leave that at the default 200, but there are guides out there on the internet. Uh, I believe there's one over at Tom's Hardware right now that say 210 or 220, but for the purposes of this overclock, clock we're gonna go with the default 200. Now for the memory frequency you're gonna need to know the speed of your RAM which in my case I have 12 gigabytes of RAM at 1600 megahertz so make sure that you check your RAM there you know there should be the sticker on there it should tell you on on the RAM chips themselves or if you still have the box left over it should tell you on that if you don't know that look it up on Google it'll tell you all the kind of RAM speeds and everything you're gonna need to know. Next you're gonna want to make sure that your CPU north bridge frequency and your link speed is set at the default. And if you're not sure what the default is, then you can go ahead and restore to default settings by pressing F5 followed by F10 to save and reset. Then from there you want to go ahead and disable CPU spread spectrum, PCIe spread spectrum, and EPU power saving mode. Skip the timing and driving controls, you don't need to bother with that for this overclock. Uh, set your CPU load line calibration and north bridge load line calibration. I like to enable it, so go ahead and enable it if you want to. I feel it gives the overclock a little bit more of a boost, but you can leave it disabled if your temperatures get a little too high. It's totally up to you. The overclock can work either enabled or disabled. Like I said, totally up to you. I like it enabled because I feel like I get a little bit more of a boost out of it. Uh, next, you're going to want to go ahead and set your CPU and north bridge voltage to manual, and then go ahead and bump the manual voltage to 1.4 and the north bridge voltage to 1.23. Now that we've set our ratios and voltages and turned off a few things that could limit our overclock, it's time to disable a few more things before we wrap it up. Go ahead and click on the advanced tab and make sure that core C6 state and HPC mode are disabled and we can go ahead and leave the rest on auto mode for the time being. So now that we're done, go ahead and hit F10 to save changes and reset and you've just overclocked your FX6300 to 4.3 three gigahertz. Now, as with any overclocking, whether it be CPU or GPU, you want to make sure you, that you stress test for at least 15 minutes to an hour. Uh, I've heard of people going 24 hours or e sometimes even two days in some cases, which to me kind of seems ridiculous. But I mean, you know, the, the more stress testing you do, the better, I guess. Now, the programs that I've stood by and always recommend to everyone is CPU-Z, SpeedFan, and Prime95. Those three programs are what I use to stress test whether I'm overclocking my CPU or my GPU. I don't really use CPU-Z for my GPU so much or Prime95. I use a couple other programs, but ask me about those programs and I'll tell you what those are if you really want to know. Hardware Monitor is another good program, but I normally find that my bases are pretty well covered with the three that I mentioned, and I'll go ahead and include the links to download those programs in the description if you don't already have them. Now this overclock 
has not once, not once given me a blue screen and everything runs smoothly for me, but please make sure to run a stress test for a little while because there's going to be so many different factors that come into play when you're talking about keeping your processor cool and moving efficiently. Anyways guys, it's going to do it for my FX6300 overclock guide. Feel free to drop any questions or comments that you might have for me in the comment section down below. If you have not already done so, please do take a second and click that subscribe button, that way you're kept up to date on all my latest videos. Once again, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.